What is Solana? If you look at Solana's website, they show transaction cost under one cent and speeds with 400 millisecond block times. And these numbers aren't just good, they're the best. In this video, we're going to talk about what these numbers mean, how Solana works, its advantages, disadvantages, and what Solana actually does in the world of crypto. I want to welcome you to the DeFi Whale YouTube channel. I've made millions in crypto and this channel is my way to give back by providing knowledge that I've learned over the years and years of deeply investing into crypto. And the more that you learn about crypto, the higher your chances are to earn from crypto. And that's what this channel is all about. Many people call Solana the Ethereum killer. So let's first talk about what makes Solana unique. And we'll get back to those speed times and transaction costs in a second. Let's start off by talking about Ethereum's creator, Vitalik Buterin, who describes a problem with blockchains called the Blockchain Trilemma. This is a set of three challenges that developers face when building blockchain. And that includes decentralization, security, and scalability. The modern idea is that facilitating all three has not been done today. Developers must sacrifice one of those three. And while blockchains all strive to overcome this trilemma, Solana is truly designed to tackle all three. However, even though they say they're decentralized, Solana has a vulnerability to decentralization, and that's the one sacrifice they're making. But it's still their ambition to hit this solution of the blockchain trilemma, but we'll talk about this more later in the video. So what does Solana do? What's their secret sauce to these fast transaction costs and hitting all three points of the trilemma? Well, to start, Solana didn't launch all too long ago. It was actually created in 2017 by a former Qualcomm executive named Anatol Yakovenko. And the main framework never actually launched until 2020. So the chances are, if you're watching this video, you're still early to Solana. And unlike most popular blockchains today, Bitcoin, Ethereum, AVAX, etc., Solana has a loose take on the consensus model where they introduce something different than previous proof of work and proof of stake models. They have a proof of history algorithm. Now, if you're interested in seeing what consensus models are like, check the link in my description below and you can see AVAX's video on how they use consensus model and it talks about Bitcoin and Ethereum as well. But let's keep going. Solana's algorithm facilitates 700,000 transactions per second. Compare this to Ethereum at 15 transactions per second and Bitcoin at seven transactions per second. It's hard to fathom the difference of this scale. I mentioned earlier that they have a block time. Solana has a block time of 400 milliseconds. Compare that to Ethereum's block time is 10 seconds and Bitcoin's is 10 minutes. Basically, Solana's lightning. So Solana's quick, but what does that proof of history algorithm actually do? In oversimplified terms, it adds a timestamp to every transaction. This allows the order of transactions to be sequenced in their true order, not at the time that they're received by the validator. Solana relies on proof of stake as well. This means Solana allows validators to verify transactions based on how many coins or tokens they hold. In the algorithm, a lead validator is chosen. Then, the proof of history timestamps those transactions. And this whole system is built much different than Ethereum, which currently operates on the proof of work blockchains. And that requires miners. So when you see people talking about Ethereum mining, that's what that means. And we'll have another video about that later. So make sure you subscribe and stick around for that. What does the Solana token SOL actually do? You see that all over the place. When you search in CoinMarketCap or Coinbase, you're going to search SOL to find Solana. What does that actually do? Well, Solana's token is actually primarily used as a means of transferring value and is also used to secure the blockchain through staking. So the use case is similar to the popular Ethereum, but its proof of stake is different in that people are staking their currency to validate transactions and they're rewarded for doing so. And those rewards are paid in Sol. The Sol token is the medium in which transaction fees are paid and is what is rewarded to people for staking. So let's talk tokenomics for a second. How many Solana tokens are there? Who owns them when we're talking about Sol? Well, 
500 million soul tokens were initially emitted. Of that amount, 12.5% were retained by the founders, 1.6% sold in auction, 35.4% were allocated to locked investors, and 38% were designated as community tokens, and finally, 12.5% are held by the Solana Foundation, which is operated by an independent board in Geneva, Switzerland. So what's really important to know about all these percentages is that nearly 50% of these t initial tokens went to what are called insiders. And basically what that means is just a fancy way to say the founders of Solana and investors. And this is a lot, but it's not truly a scary amount in my opinion when the prices are low. But at some point, these investors are going to begin to sell because they want to reap their rewards. By design, Solana also has this system in place where transaction fees are paid in Sol and they're burnt, and they're, which means they're permanently destroyed. So when you transfer Solana for any purpose, those fees that you pay are in Sol, and then what Solana does with those fees is they burn them. And that means they permanently destroy them, and this is a deflationary mechanism to reduce the total supply and thereby maintain a healthy Sol price. Because if they don't do something like this, then the inflation can get out of hand for what they're rewarding people for staking. So let's talk about the downsides of Solana. It sounds awesome, but what are the negatives? The price is down 80% right now. What caused this price downturn? And let's talk about the negatives of this. So first off, centralization. We mentioned this earlier in the video. It's hard to be truly decentralized if half your token supply is owned by venture capitalists and other insiders. But Maybe is this is just a necessary evil of any blockchain. Either way, this downside should go down in risk over time as investors sell their tokens. But inversely, as investors sell their tokens, that's not great for Solana's value. Moreover, the way that Solana is designed, there are hardware requirements for validators to maintain a node. So because of these hardware requirements, people are finding it actually easier to host on cloud services such as AWS. This right now, there's a large percentage on AWS today, and if that number of validators on AWS goes above 50%, then over half the network is resting on top of a centralized risk, albeit it's a small one, but it's still a centralized risk, which is pretty a negative term when it comes to cryptos, because decentralization is a big factor of why people believe in it. And lastly, on the downsides, you get voting rights with your Solana that you own, but you have to pay to vote. And to hold a validator, you have to commit to voting over every single day. So that means you have to pay a cost of 1.1 soul per vote. So today, at about $40 per soul, that's only $14,500 per year. But that's compared to $93,000 when Sol was at its peak price less than a year ago. But still, you're paying to vote, which is pretty unique to Solana's blockchain and not really the best use case compared to other cryptocurrencies out there when you can have this governance system without having to pay to vote. Now, there are some advantages to it because the people that are paying to vote, they truly care about Solana's direction. So you can see the positives and negatives either way. Now, without a doubt, Solana is an absolute powerhouse and maybe the best blockchain out in the world today. However, it's also taken the biggest hit in this bear market. And what's more, being the best, like Solana, gives you a target on your back. In future videos, I'm going to talk about upcoming projects that aren't even public yet that people are calling the Solana killers and how much like Solana is the Ethereum killer. These are Solana killers, so make sure that you're subscribed so you know when these posts come out, along with some other awesome videos that I'll consistently post. And by the way, when I talk about these new Solana killers, I'll also mention where you can get them, because buying cryptos isn't as easy when it's as small and new as they are. Now remember, the more that you learn, the better chance you have to earn with crypto. If there's any concept or token that you want to understand better, or get my opinion on it, let me know in the comments. I'll respond to you and maybe I'll even make a video on it. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. It means a lot and really helps us out. I really hope you learned something today and I hope to see you in the next video as well.